All right. We are technically streaming. And hello, everybody. It looks like we are live. Welcome to another evening of Jim and Rob Overanalyze Movies, the live video podcast where we like to go beyond the review and get into the craft, the story, and the meaning of the films we watch today. Uh, of course, uh, we're, we're more than that. We are also the home of the best chat on the internet. Tonight, uh, my co-host and I are going to be looking at The Matrix Resurrections. That's uh, Warner Brothers' desperate cash grab. Um, the fourth in the Matrix series of uh, the fourth in a trilogy. One that was never going to be added to and has been added to. Uh, Jim and I maybe didn't think much of this flick when we saw it a few weeks ago. Uh, you can check out our parking lot reaction in the description below. Uh, but we're here. Um, here's the log line uh, from IMDb. Return to a world of two realities. One, everyday life. The other, what lies behind it. To find out if his reality is a construct. To truly know himself. Mr. Anderson will have to choose to follow the White Rabbit once more. Oh my goodness. This is so terrible. The basic gag of the film, folks, is after we saw them die in, I believe it was Matrix Revolutions, they of course have resurrected uh, Neo, Mr. Anderson, and uh, Trinity, or Tiffany, and we're going to find in the film it's basically sort of you know, uh, maybe not a rehash, but they're certainly, tr they're treading over some ground uh, in, uh, uh, well, as the title says, it's Resurrections. Uh, anyway, it was directed this by this time only by Lana. Uh, Lana Wachowski, not her sister, Lily. Uh, it was written by Lana Wachowski, David Mitchell, and Alexander uh, Hemman. Stars, of course, Keanu Reeves and Carrie Ann Moss. It also stars... Neil Patrick Harris, Priyanka Chopra Jones, Jada Pinkett Smith, Yaya Abdul Mateen II, or Junior, Jessica Henwick, Jonathan Groff, and a blink in you'll miss it appearance by Christina Ricci. Uh, copyright 2021 and all that blah blah blah. Uh, let's uh, let's jump to the social nutrition checklist. Of course, uh, did it earn a reframe stamp? Would it have earned a reframe stamp? Could it have earned a reframe stamp? Uh, I checked the website. Doesn't look like they've got it yet, and I don't think they will. So let's give a big fat X to that one. Um, would it, uh, it was it a union made picture? Yes, it was. So they got one, one out of four so far. Uh, what about, would it have passed the Bechtel test? Now, technically it doesn't. And we'll talk about this a bit more, maybe in the craft or maybe in the meaning. I would argue that this is one of, a perfect example of a film that sort of breaks the idea of the Bechtel test. Um, and, uh, but of course, all models, uh, <laughs> you know, all models are false, false, some are useful, and I still find some use for the Bechtel test. So we're going to stick with it. And then last but certainly not least, could we call this a class conscious film? And I'm going to say no to that. Uh, I Yeah, I don't believe it has a class consciousness, uh, although there are some, you know, what I would call, uh, like within the scope of class solidarity, uh, gender identity, that kind of thing, like, I mean, it fits with them that but it's not uh, from a class perspective so no uh so that gives us a big one out of four or 25 percent anyway uh i think that gives that's our opportunity for me to introduce uh my co-host mr jim chaboyko how you doing my friend very good yeah just uh i um I don't know if it was a mistake or not, but I watched uh, the original Matrix last night, if only just to sort of compare the two. But I know we're primarily looking at this one 
yeah. uh, tonight, uh, Resurrections. But uh, yeah, I thought it was kind of instructive uh, to take a glance at the first one. How are you doing? Pretty darn good. Um, good. I had a nice, been outside a couple of times in the last week and notwithstanding all the snow, and for those of you who watch the channel, you might have caught Jim and I in our parking or beside the parking lot reaction for the Kingsman, where they're shoveling a bunch of snow and they continue to shovel more snow because, mm -hmm. yeah, it just keeps falling, eh? Keeps coming. Yeah, I was out and to, it's, yeah. Go, I was just going to say, we, we summertime comes around, we're sort of in the middle of a drought uh, period. So, uh, yeah, bring it on as long as it's not too much as a as in to cause a, a spring flood, but, uh, yeah. Yeah. Um, what, uh, okay. Jim, you know what? Uh, we don't have any, uh, we've got a couple of viewers right now. We've got a couple of views and a like already. Yay. Us. Mm. Uh, that said, uh, looks like they're more of the lurk. Oh, wait, no. Now they're chiming in. Okay. We got, let's, uh, let's welcome uh, Richard L. And of course, Katie Fowler, well, uh, hello, not hello. be far behind. So uh, two thirds of the Research Hi, Street Irregulars are here. Great to see you guys. Um, yeah. Why don't we, Jim? Why don't we jump in? Let's. Uh, sure. Yeah. Let's let's just get going. We want. Uh, hopefully, it uh, won't just be a uh, okay meeting. Say one thing. Final thought. <laughs> yeah. Uh, kick it off. Spoiler free. Quick review, which may be just a rehash of what we said in the parking lot reaction yeah well um you know we we uh were sort of reintroduced to the characters in a, a slightly different situation time has passed um did everything happen like we remembered it or like the characters remembered it uh the, the you know the uh, lana wachowski sort of uh et al plays with that notion a little bit so there's i, I mean if there's one interesting thing uh that this movie brings out it's that you know it, it, that it is a little bit meta that it plays with its own uh legend i guess uh a little bit um but moving forward into the movie uh it's fine uh it, it was good to see some of the old characters uh which actually made you made me sort of miss uh, hugo weaving and lawrence fishburne a little bit um but yeah it was just it was a real strange product i think uh product it's horrible to call a movie a product, but it's a real strange yeah. fish, we'll call it. Um, it just, and I've been reading a little bit about it since, and I thought, well, did I give it enough credit? You know, it's all, you know, it's all about love, and it's all about, you know, how something may be able to triumph over something else. Uh, we'll wait till the spoiler come, you know, spoiler alert. But uh, uh, it just, it, it felt like a ultimately to me like a TV version of the, the, the first movie. Uh, it just wasn't as crisp. Um, and and in the first movie too, and we'll talk the, a little bit about this, there's some, I, and I watched it last night, there's some real killer lines and almost the last half hour, I remember shots and I remember things that supporting characters said, you know, quotes word for word. There's Hugo Weaving has a great, as Agent Smith has a great, um, a great sort of monologue uh yeah i mean I, i'd sort of like to get your thoughts on it as well but you know ultimately i'm coming away again thinking is this necessary uh i think the lana wachowski was sort of backed into a corner with this as, and we'll talk about that i'm sure as well uh because there was threats that the movie company would go ahead and, and film its own version sans any wachowski so uh but uh yeah i mean yeah, we'll see. It, it, it. To me, the okay. whole franchise feels a little. Well, just all, last word. To me, the whole franchise feels like Jaws, where the first one is by far the best, and the others are just sort of there. I, you know what, I, I'm gonna put this. And it, it, what's interesting is what is a theme within the film, or maybe not a theme, a motif, reflections. Uh, oh. mirrors and that. And I would say, here is my hot take, Jim. Uh, this one is, this one is a pale reflection of what came before. Ah. And, um, I see what you did there. <laughs> professional critic stuff there. <laughs> yeah. Um, the, bring it all back to the start. Yeah. <laughs> 
that and and I go even further. Although I think there's still, I, I managed to pick it up again on streaming just to kind of much like yourself. Was I being too harsh? Um, no, I don't think I was. <laughs> I stick with my initial reaction. Although I think I drew a bit more out of it on the once they kind of got out of the way of oh, we got to make this movie anyway. You know what? I want to talk about X, Y, and Z. And then, just like I said before, Jim, as you mentioned, I did, it was so good to see, it was just so good to see those two on screen. And uh, Carrie Ann Moss, uh, Trinity, and Keanu Reeves, Neo, on screen again. To see their chemistry, it was funny. Uh, another critic, I cannot believe, I can't remember the woman's name, she is uh, on, on one of the many outlets she's on. One is uh, her her own podcast with uh, Al Alonzo. I uh, can't remember his last name. God damn it. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> she, she says, now that's the rom-com I want to see. Neo and Trinity, give me two hours of that cup of coffee. and Because it might have been one of the best scenes in the entire movie, uh, you know, later on. Yeah, uh, and we'll talk about it more in the spoiler zone, but it was just a great, that was a great line. I want to give me that rom-com. <laughs> um, so there were some, a couple of highlights, but how much of that was just speaking to, to nostalgia and the fact that I thought, you know, the pre, the other two movies in the trilogy, I, I kind of thought it's like, whoa, they're really, well, that sucks, <laughs> you know? <laughs> No true love win for this romantic. <laughs> anyway, so that's kind of that's kind of where I was where I was coming from on this flick, Jim. Um, mm -hmm. Listen, uh, let's before we move on. It looks like we've got a couple. Well, we <laughs> okay. DMG, Woo. yay! Who's chiming in what, on what? how he really didn't like Jonathan Groff as Smith instead of Hugo Weaving? Um, suspect he's not the only one who felt that way um and then anastasia <laughs> uh anastasia oh uh go no that would be go it'd be law log vinova <laughs> log vinova uh with some spam bs so Welcome to our chat, chat bot, it's a comrade postal bot, code. comrade chat bot. <laughs> it's, a, it's a Russian postal code. Yeah, there we go. Uh, Richard L. says, one amusing self-needle is the boss telling Reeves, they're going to do a fourth Matrix game even after they promised the third was the last. <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> uh and and we will we'll get more into that i i i think that's part of the meta one of the many meta commentaries that's actually interesting in this film uh without it without still being kind of a lame pale reflection of its of its of its predecessors all right um mm -hmm. before we move forward though i do uh i think it is uh quickly just uh to shamelessly ask everyone uh for a thumbs up We'll beg for more later, but if you can give a thumbs up, if you haven't already, maybe a subscribe. We would appreciate that. Uh, wouldn't we, Jim? Yeah, sure. I just did it. <laughs> thumbs up my own thing. Hey. I... <laughs> you know what? The only one who does it. The only one who ain't thumbs, thumbs up. upping his own thing is me because it is my it's the Rob Christensen channel. Oh, we got a fifth one. Some of bad form. Well, see, we you gotta ask, ask and you shall receive. Yeah. All right. Uh, on that note, let's, uh, Jim. I think it's time for you know what you know what it's time for. Uh oh. Watch all. The spoiler Beware. zone. <laughs> Beware ye who enter. <laughs> uh, did that actually come oh. through? Yeah, I did, yeah. <laughs> On my uh, end, anyway. All right. Yes, folks, we are now in officially in the spoiler zone. Uh, anything you've watched up to this point, uh, you're fine. But now we actually do the... Uh, <laughs> 
Uh, now we're actually going to go into uh, into the craft. Of course, uh, Richard L. with a uh, little another needle. <laughs> Do you like your own Facebook posts too? <laughs> I well, technically, this is Rob's channel, so I still get to. Uh, I, I can still do that. Oh, He's absolutely so, uh, right. <laughs> not look so gauche, I guess. <laughs> Self-absorbed, or yeah, just. Yeah. <laughs> uh, okay. Um, yes, let's get into the craft, Jim. Why don't you? Why don't you lead us off? What did as far as just the nuts and bolts of the movie? What did you think? What did you like? What did you dislike? What were you um, mediocre about? <laughs> you know, the this one here, the fourth one. I guess one of the nice things is is there was enough time, and it wasn't. And this might have also worked against it, but it wasn't so super urgent. You actually got to spend some time with Neo, and Neo wasn't running from place to place. Uh, so it, it, it did give give the characters some. Okay, chance is that to that's breathe. more of a story thing. Why don't we yeah, talk about the craft? Craft, I mean, part of the problem is this This was one, and this might reflect on the movie too, that, that we did see three weeks ago. And, uh, you know, I, I, taking a look at some of the changes they made in the cast, uh, uh, the, the, the person who played uh, um, uh, Lawrence Fishburne's role, how am I, Morpheus? How am I forgetting that? I just watched it last night. Um, uh, the, the, yeah, yeah, uh, the, yeah, I yeah, even guy. like um, how you <laughs> how played Lawrence Fishburne. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> but um, he brought some fun to the role a little bit, uh, not a little bit, but a way different energy. Energy because if you watch uh, Lawrence Fishburne as Morpheus, he's a little bit, a little bit pompous. It's one of those characters that you super would think, serious. Super serious and a little. There was there was two lines in the original one. He goes, "Oh, why do my eyes hurt?" And he says, "Because you've never used them before." You know that kind of that kind of a little bit, a little bit of uh, over seriousness. Well, and that he doesn't have that in this one. The character doesn't have that. So, so that was kind of a nice change. What pace. does he also um, say in "Welcome to the 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 reality of the or the theater of the real" or some? really yeah. over the top but it yeah. sounded so cool when i first saw the movie like well it's it's one of those characters that you probably thought was super cool when you're young and as you get a little bit older you go like oh brother you know, <laughs> give it a check but uh <laughs> so I, I i enjoyed that but for every you know replacement that they had you know you sort of wondered why Lawrence fishburne wasn't in this i miss i did miss hugo weaving as agent smith um these roles are very physical so i can understand how not everyone ages like Keanu and, and Carrie Ann Moss, but uh, um, you know, in terms of, of the people that came in, the baddies with Neil Patrick Harris and Jonathan Groff, there, there was that, there was, um, they were okay. Uh, but again, it, it, the first one was so well done. I, I did miss uh, Agent Smith and, and, you know, frankly, the anonymity of the bad guys, you know, okay. just with the suits and you made, didn't may, maybe know who they were. But uh, other than that, I, as I said, in the parking lot, uh, uh, reaction a lot of the same or similar shots and again i wasn't sure if this was derivative or a, or a call out you know a callback um some of the same shots the the bullets as i mentioned falling from the helicopter uh a lot of stuff with mirrors and glass of course um a, a lot and this was kind of interesting i thought actually too is they used a lot of footage from the first movie in this movie I think we were estimating was maybe up to 10 minutes uh, when we had seen it uh, after, after we got out of the movie. Um, so that was kind of an interesting thing. It may be a bit experimental. Okay, I, I you know really what though? That. You're, that's not really, I'm going to, I'm going to take over now because sure. you're, you're totally getting into story stuff and it's yeah. like, we're, we're, I was, let's, I, here's my, I, I do have some specifics on craft here. Mm -hmm. um, I would say Jim that, I think one of the biggest differences between the two movies, if we're comparing it to the first, but even the second and the third, like, I mean, those three, but especially the first, the unique action sequences, big, big set pieces. Whereas here, it was either, and I don't know whether it was on purpose or not. You come away with feeling this is just a low rent, 
Like, oh, okay, we got to have some more kung fu. We'll do that. Um, mm-hmm. it, yeah, a couple like un, 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 uh, uninteresting cinematography. Like, and, and and yeah, you know what? Right. So okay, we saw that before. We saw that gag before. We've seen all this before, and. You know what? I, I mean, there might be a thematic thing we'll talk about later, but how much of it is maybe just like, no, we'll do, we'll do that. Why don't we just do that? You mm. know, and I, I, I think, especially a, a series that is so built in action, and they're still giving us action. Um, even like, I mean, the, the there's an end sequence. Uh, they call it swarming. For those, for those who haven't seen it, but you're in the spoiler zone, we're going to explain everything. Uh, they call it swarming. Uh, instead of the agents taking over individuals, they can just say, all right, we're taking every human being, and they just become automatons, bots. They could become bots. And it reminded me of so many zombie movies, so many late yep. zombie movies, where they're all super fast, super suicidal, and just... You know, insanely, and it's like, again, um, yeah, I, I, I've seen it before. Seen it, seen it, seen it, seen it, seen it. And it kind of pains me when this was a, a film series that not that long ago, not not even 25 years ago, was the pinnacle. Like, just the, here, we're going to reinvent action. We're going to build on stuff that had been done before, but we're going to bring it, like, bump. We're going to kick it up a notch. They banged that spice weasel, Jim. Banged it hard. <laughs> anyway, yeah. and that, I think, is the biggest disappointment. Otherwise, everything's fine. You know, the acting's fine. Uh, again, I, I don't know what the deal. Like, I, I would. I'd watch any movie if they put Keanu Reeves and Carrie Ann Moss in it together. I'd be like, oh, I could watch two hours of them having coffee. I could just... Their chemistry as as grown-ass adults, you know, a couple... Couple of women in their fifties, or a couple of uh, a couple a couple of people in their fifties, couple of kids, uh, and they're still just preternaturally hot in an unassuming way. Like you've met these people at parties; they're the folks that, well, we just went super nice, super kind, very interesting, but interested as well. And you're like. And then everyone's talking about that. Did you know they just got off of Mount Everest and they did this and they did that? And you would never know because they're super cool and it, but not in a capital C way. Yeah, I can watch that fucking shit all day. Uh, <laughs> they should do a Hallmark uh, Christmas movie. Yeah. I that would hold up. <laughs> Put them in Scotland. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Put them in Scotland and lame Scotland and lame Tartan. I'd still be I'd still be raving about that film. And throw in uh Anna what the hell is her name? Dobrev. Nina Dobrev. I'm just <laughs> heaven. Uh, wow. <laughs> uh all right, Jim, anything you wanted to add on on craft? I say craft, well, just, Jim. I mean we we you you mentioned some of the action sequences and there was that earlier one um in the office basically an office shoot up yeah and that's sort of with like, water like, yeah and i was just kind of <laughs> bored and it didn't seem to have it didn't seem to have the urgency or the the uh the point that some mistakes. of the mistakes yeah the sequences that they did on the first one i have some some things to say about stakes more for the story uh, aspect yeah. of it but it was that one office sequence and i just thought oh how many more bullets are you going to shoot like are they even uh, did they even cause damage like it was it yeah. was yeah it was it was not uh just you know putting in the time with like a bad guitar yeah. solo like this well, has taken us nowhere the only thing i think you might be able to say and i think this may have been a, a ch- an on purpose choice there were times when the bullet would hit the Hit some of the office dividers where it would kind of be like it was really j- clearly jagged. And it's like, okay, maybe somebody's trying to make it have a video game, an older video game aesthetic, oh. maybe. Yeah. But I, I, I'm like, 
I, I just I'm unwilling to give them that much credit. Mm-hmm. You know, I just I'm not. Eh. Oh well. Okay. Well yeah. then, I think it's time. Well, first before we move on, we do have a bit of chatter. We've got we've got another bot, Jim. I, we're start. We're moving on up, Jim. There's a there's boy, another bot in home. our chat, Escobar Escobar Barker. Well, at least they're not Russian. <laughs> Voy f dot f y i. Maybe it has something to do with Ukraine. I don't know. I don't trust these bots. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but, uh, oh, these bots this. can. I wonder if these bots can give us a like. We're at one eighty nine, folks. Or Richard, give us a subscription. Yeah. Uh, Richard L. says, a good zinger. The movie is basically the main characters getting a personalized tour of their own epilogue. <laughs> yeah. This is a good one. And that's a perfect note to, let's talk about what we really want to talk about here, I think, is uh, story. story. Um, and, yeah. Well, it was a story, all right. Of a sort, <laughs> uh, Jim. Do you want to uh, do you want to start us off on story? Well, Actually, I think you, you know, do. I think that's where you want to be. So let's let's go there. So I, I you know, the, a few of the thoughts, and I was thinking this, and thank you for reminding me about the whole swarming uh, zombies aspect. It's sort of like the creators asking themselves, you know what, you know what this movie need, you know what a Matrix movie needs, hordes of zombies. Uh, also needs some Pokemon. If you remember at the start, there's a couple of uh, machines that they <laughs> co-opt, and and they pretty much look like Pokemon to to this old guy anyway. Um, so that's a little bit in the the derivative folder there. But um, you know, it, again, just to mention the first movie, it was it was ruthless about the way it handled its characters in a way that. Uh, I I couldn't be as a fiction writer. I I would think uh, you, you really have to be able to, you know, kill your darlings. I think if you uh, uh, if you write something like this. And that first one, you know, there's the one scene with the blanket over four people that uh, that had just been killed towards the end, and and you just think, man, that was a high price to play pay. And mm-hmm. this, not that I'm advocating the arbitrary death of characters, but no, but I mean, this is a stakes thing, like at no point did you feel that anybody was did i feel that anybody was truly in danger um and 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 the deaths were even poignant as switch the the one woman who was blonde and dressed in white at, in the first movie uh just before um joey pants uh, yeah cypher unplugs her she looks up and she says not like this and that was no, a great line no by not, a supporting not like character this. she says it twice and just and, it, and just and it uh, it's crushing, and and at no time did you did this movie achieve anything like that. I, I, I think, um, it, and it goes to show the quality of that first one. But even that, the um, um, the whole uh, Hugo weaving Agent Smith when he's when he's got uh, Morpheus chained up, and he goes, "I hate this place. I oh. hate the way it smells." And and just you know, in terms of. You know, it did take some time. It did. You did spend some more time. I think that you know, not sort of frantic time with the characters, but at the same time, you didn't have anything like those uh, those lines or those moments. Uh, and and so for me, that that was that was an aspect that was truly missing. So you know what's interesting, you? Jim. Um, I I'm just I'm just look I'm just trying to find it now. Like this was, I mean, it wasn't a a crazy long movie, but it was a long movie. Whereas the Matrix, the old, the OG Matrix, its runtime, okay, it was 136. It was 136 yeah. minutes, but I, 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 I can still remember leaving the theater and going, "Wow, that was like <laughs> it, you." You left the theater going, "Oh, I could have stuck with those people for another hour." Yeah. Yeah. That was the best 10 minutes of my life. <laughs> what? <laughs> Why is the sun going down? <laughs> exactly. I could have sworn it was broad daylight when I entered the theater. It's pitch black. Yeah. yeah it's, it, I, you know what was also clear? What they were also, also ruthless about in the first movie, Jim? And I think that's what makes that movie and hurts this one. It's, 
I know why I'm there. It's like, oh, okay, there's these machines. Yeah. They've now enslaved humanity. The mechanism is r ridiculous, but who cares? Like, who cares? You just need a reason. Then you know, okay, they're the bad guys. They go to all our paranoia about how much we're depending on, you know, gizmos, and we're all afraid of, you know, uh, our... our are we really seeing what we're seeing? And what if the ro what if the robots take over? I mean, uh, <laughs> the but you knew exactly who the bad guy was. You knew what the stakes were. There was a Zion that needed to be tr protected and saved because they were the freedom fighters. There are these robots who are enslaving humanity. Uh, the plucky rebels, the Death Star. Like I mean, it was very clear on what the conflict was and. It uh, and why you know why they needed a hero. They needed a super mensch who could fight the the who could fight the agents, the ones that everybody runs from. Uh -huh. Crystal clear. Here, even at the end, I'm like, so why why was any of this going on? Some bullshit about how they have to be two if they're together but not that it's all like. Kind of like the this is the midichlorians moment where it's like mm. we're looking too close at the force, we're looking too close at the mechanics of mm. the you know the power system, and it's it's not surviving. Quit quit looking at that so closely, and yeah. I think that's part of the uh, one of the number of problems here is yeah it's it's looking at stuff we don't want to see, we don't need to see, that actually kind of takes us out of the movie because it's just more and more ridiculous. But even the... So we've got this new character, uh, Bugs, the rabbit, and oh, yeah. it's like, okay, why is she getting Neo out? Like, what? I, you know what? Why? <laughs> you, you have the Niobe character who's like, you know, we're all fine here, which I got to admit, as I get older in life, I'm kind of having a lot of sympathy with her position. It's like, look, we're not eating shit like we were before. We're not fighting constantly. Oh, There's yeah. a detente. <laughs> you know, yeah. if Neo wanted to get out, he would have got gotten his own ass out of there. That's why he called him Neo. <laughs> but, but even then, like her rationale isn't that convincing I, I think so. You you've got all these things. So by the end, you just really don't know why you're there from a story perspective. Mm -hmm. I, I I mean, now, and it is part of the story. So I think there is a bright spot in all this mess. Um, we do know why we're there because Warner Brothers. <laughs> like <laughs> again, there's a few scenes that are actually interesting. They're kind of dynamic. The uh, and it kind of hooks into the whole idea of repetition. Uh, but when that whole team is trying to think up a, a new concept for the Matrix video game, the fourth of a series of three video game, and they just keep repeating themselves and going round and round, and they're all state saying versions of the things they've said before, and the way they cut that, and it's like, well, here's where the creativity is coming in. Here is. Uh, Lada Wachowski's big you to, to Warner Brothers. Um, mm -hmm. Even the idea of this, like, I mean, listen, it, even her acknowledgement that it's like, none of these stories are that unique. You know, it's how you tell them. It's the, the, the current trappings and everything. And she's just not interested in telling the story again. You know, not interested in it at all. So any of the scenes that are have any kind of you wake up and you're sort of in it is the ones where she's basically all the corporate speak the Christina Ricci she's got got one line and it's I think we have to keep fresh and what was it fresh and unique I think that was her line we got to keep that yeah. in mind as we think of the Matrix 4 there's <laughs> yeah. yeah. looking at Okay, you can see Lana Wachowski in that moment. 
and mm. it is woven into the story. So I think it's there is a bright spot to the story, which is almost like the subversive anti movie movie that's sort of going on here. Yeah, <laughs> it's yeah. it's her own little bit of uh, it's kind of it's a much better. Uh, I'm thinking Dune 1984, Jim, where you could see you could see where David Lynch was actually interested. I think those are the parts where Lana Wachowski is actually interested in what she's doing. And it's, uh, (laughs) and who knows what the deal is between her and Lily, why Lily wasn't also frog marched into this room to help make this piece of, you know what, uh, (laughs) maybe, maybe Lily moved a body for Lana and Lana's are, okay, I do owe you for that one. Yeah, <laughs> I'll I'll take this. I'll, I'll I'll deal with this, but yeah, yeah, Jim, I uh, I think that's where I'm. Uh, that's where I'm coming from on this one. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's mm-hmm. otherwise I, I can't. You know, it's, is there anything else to compliment? It's all just so like even at the end, why 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 all of a sudden is Trinity flying? Why does she have to be the the new one? You know, there's. Maybe come some sort of ham-handed attempt at, uh, I, I wouldn't, you know what, I, I don't want to. Equal opportunity flight. <laughs> so. Well, but there's a little bit of, uh, the, 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 there's a couple of conversations. Fuck, it might have actually passed the Bechdel test. Maybe, maybe, uh, close, like it flirted with it, uh, about, uh, no, it wasn't. Yeah, it didn't because she was talking to a guy. But talking about how t- uh, one of the uh, name, you know, one of the almost red sh- shirted crew members, the blonde of this one, you know, she kind of fulfilling that role in the crew of the uh, nim- yeah. nim- nim- blah 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 blah. Um, she, yeah. uh, oh, she's just the reason she's doing it is because of Trinity and. You know, it was like when I was growing up as a thing in a pod, I wanted to grow up to be out of here and her, some nonsense like that. So maybe a little, yeah, yeah. but otherwise it's like, yeah, I don't, I don't get that. It doesn't fit with the previous. It's like, okay, well, but by then I just don't care. I'm like, mm-hmm. and heck, her and Keanu are still together, you know, so. I really was like, oh, I'm good. <laughs> yeah. What do you yeah. think? I mean, th- I, there was there was a there was a few other things. I remember one thing that we were making fun of. Uh, I don't think it made to our it to our parking lot reaction, but uh, one thing one we were the, making fun of. So Neo, <laughs> just one <laughs> amongst the, the uh, <laughs> Neobi, who's um, uh, Jada Pinkett Smith's character, who is aged. They they, mm-hmm. they she's like ninety or something, and. And still, you know, raised in hell and, and uh, you know, is not backing down from anything. So she was kind of a, a, a nice inclusion, I think, to the yeah. story. Uh, and, and she sort of showed how time had passed and how things had, had evolved uh, after uh, Neo's time, you know, after the third movie. And I thought that was kind of an interesting thing. Yeah. I, I, I'm not so devoted to the whole trilogy, uh, the other two movies of the trilogy, that I went, oh, this clears up everything. But or or adds to it significantly but i thought it was kind of a neat way to go that that you know it wasn't all happy ever after uh yeah. after the third one well, but it, there was but, an interesting point where yeah go ahead no no i'm i, I, I well, just I'll, noticed, I'll just say i just, I'll just noticed say, a key is kind of popped off on my little budget clicky keyboard continue jim mm, certainly uh, there was an interesting debate between Niobe and I, and I can't, I can't remember who the other character was, but it was another uh, a citizen of Io. And, I want to say her name was, was Vanessa. I, Veronica starts with a V. Was it? I think. Yeah. I'll, I'll look it um, up, but continue. Or, she, uh, we know what you're talking about. The gardener. Yes. Yeah. Well, somebody said, somebody said, you know, some of us want to move on. Some of us want to evolve and get out of here and you're just worried about strawberries or something to that effect oh, because oh, there's there's a oh, whole the, uh, remember and uh yeah no the bugs yeah and, yeah, and uh, like and, i mean and yeah I think, 
a character that has been tech ostensibly one of the drivers of the plot. That character. Yes. <laughs> which which shows and, and just said, how lame this is. Oh, was it Bugs? Yeah. Was it Jessica Bugs? Okay. Henwick. And she said, you yeah. know, some of us want to do something. All you care about is nutrition, <laughs> you know, like <laughs> feeding your people. Uh, huh. She's she chalked it up to a vanity project. Yeah, never she mind. Said you were just interested that, in growing, that just, growing that just, strawberries, but not just vanity, but flavor. <laughs> like we yes. could not be just eating slop and grinding through war, uh, which I think is a perfect example of. Uh, a, a great time to hook into because we only got we got less than twenty minutes left. Time to hook into the meaning. But first, I want to we Jim. We've got a few comments from the folks in the uh, chat, and I wanted to I wanted to bring them uh, bring them up uh, uh, before we before we move into that. So, uh, DMG, he's got a few a uh, few Bon Mots in here. Bon Mots. First, they introduced way, way too many characters. And why, oh, why did they bring back the Merovingian again? Yeah, that was not a good moment. Like, and, and again, he, uh, although if you kind of listen to it in the, in, the, in the streaming version, it's like, oh, franchises. And I think in the Babel, he was also just another one to rant about Hey, we had it good back then. Not this character's wrecking it, is this movie's wrecking it. That may be about the only purpose of him coming back, because that's all he does. He doesn't even fight. Uh, yeah, yeah. What else does DMG say? Um, the bullet time, th the bullet time of bullet time. Oh, that, God, that was a lame story. Hook. Um, but he said, uh, DMG says, the bullet time of bullet time with Doogie Howser MD was just stupid. Uh, the stress and strain of trying to keep up, like the flash on New Superman and Justice League. <laughs> and then I think he's riffing on some a couple of things we said. Not a good sign when the movie feels longer than it actually yeah. is. Um, that was one of the biggest faults too. Oh, okay, here things are better. So why are they fighting? They were so confused on the explanation. It was like the end game reshoots explaining time travel. Um, I I'm not a hundred percent sure. I agree with the comparison, DMG, but I, I I totally get where where he's going. Eh? Um, yeah, yeah. Why are we here? What? <laughs> where is the fight? <laughs> you know. Yeah. Other than some young keeners are like, wow, it's Neo. We got to go get him. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Yeah. Neo. Well, I'm not sure I want to leave. <laughs> um, well, Vlad 65 comes in. Vlad. <laughs> uh, happy ever after is never dramatically interesting. Um, not sure what he, like other than happily ever after is oh no because i mentioned uh, yeah oh. I, I would just in, in the time that had yeah. passed since yeah uh since neo the third one there that's what oh but it was to. never i don't think that like that left on a a positive note but not a happily ever after note like first of all mm -hmm. you just key characters had died um yeah yeah certainly was an happily ever after for neo <laughs> And Trinity, no. <laughs> and even the future it wasn't necessarily a bright new future. It was a dawn, but it wasn't necessarily happily ever after. I think it was. Uh, well, we've got to figure that out. And mm -hmm. yeah, mm -hmm. the Wachowskis couldn't figure out a fourth and went, "Yeah, we're good." And then Warner Bros says, "No, you're not. <laughs> we're gonna suck you back in." <laughs> we're gonna right. combine this with Space Jam and uh, see what we can come up with. Uh, Ahmed is here. <laughs> Vlad oh. 65, the anti-Peter Jackson effect. Wow. Uh, <laughs> DMG, they tried to stick four hours worth of plot into two and a half hours worth of runtime. Uh, I don't think they had four hours of plot. <laughs> I think they had to just totally make up stuff to... 
ooh, this will complicate things. Uh, yeah. But I see now I have Vlad's anti Peter Jackson effect. But Ahmed, Jelly Duck, Jelly Duck. Uh, it's going to say this movie is just bad. At least we don't have HBO Max and not available in the Middle East. And hello there. And we say hello to you. Hello. Um, uh, ridiculous about how Neo, who became the game creator. I I don't know. What did you think of that choice? I, I For myself, I'm like, oh, okay. I I, you know, sure. Could have been interesting. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Um, I mean, it, it contrasts, I guess, because he's working at a big, big firm in the first one, right? And he comes in, you go, oh, he wakes up at 9.15 and he runs to the office and the, the one guy's giving him a dressing down and saying, you know, if you want to work here, you get to work on time. So there's a little bit of that, like he's still answering to someone, uh, even, despite everything that's gone on, despite his years and that sort of thing. But uh, I, I didn't mind that so much. Yeah. You have to give I, him something to do. And, and I think it, I don't think there's a better movie in here. I think Lana Wachowski, uh, she made it quite clear, like in in so much of this film, it's like, I'm being made to make this. And if I'm going to say mm. anything interesting, it's going to have nothing to do with the actual plot of this movie. Um, all right. On that note, we do have to keep moving, uh, Jim. Uh, mm -hmm. We're moving into the meaning. Uh, and Sounds as a good. matter of fact, I will hand it over to you, my friend. We'll take Oy. the story thing off. <laughs> um, or do you want yeah. me, Jim, do you want me to start on this one? Maybe, yeah. Yeah, I was trying to sure. write some notes earlier during my break uh, from work and didn't really come up with tons of stuff. But uh, I was sort of, yeah, wanting to see what you said. I think about that. there's a few things going on here. One is the... Uh, like the almost like at the beginning, they do have two relevant to the story kind of comments that sort of keep coming up, right? Um, mm. one about repetition and loops and treadmills, which I, if memory, that was not as big a deal in the original film. That was more about, am I really, is the world I'm seeing real, or is there more to the world, more to life? And a lot about identity. Um, but that was more shown than even talked about. But certainly, yeah, is what I'm seeing real? And yeah, what's the nature of reality? Whereas here, uh, I do think there is, and this may also hook into Lana Wachowski's Hobson's choice of... <laughs> Absolutely, you have any horse you want, as long as it's the first one we grab for you, um, which is the actual root of Hobson's choice. Um, but the that that idea of choice and free will, and the idea of choice being an illusion, that you're kind of led to a thing, and then it's sort of uh, kind of hedges its bed a little, and mm. then of course just the meta commentary on the nature of story and uh, and although it ties into the two ideas of choice and repetition and treadmill yeah there are only so many stories there are only so many conflicts there are only so many ways and yeah we're you know we're we're not as into fresh as we think we are we want to see the same story just different enough that we think we're seeing it new again we want it reef it's not that we want it fresh we want it refreshed and I, I in many respects i think this is probably the the part years later people will when they're talking about lana wachowski the wachowski's oeuvre their their run of work they may jim actually talk about this film as saying yeah they, they obviously not even they, just Lana was pissed about having to make this thing. Um, but they are, they're pissed about making it. They make, you know, some anti-corporate stuff. They make a little bit of fun of people who interpreted the film, their, their, the trilogy later. This is a critique of capitalism. This is this, this is this. Mm -hmm. um, even the douchebags are going, I didn't like the first one. I like mayhem. <laughs> um, 
but I think a lot of it may come down to their, you know, we do get a, a better idea of how they look at the world as filmmakers, maybe. Um, and so they are still saying interesting things. It's just that they're saying it in the, boy, we hated having to make this fucking movie. <laughs> and we're, we're going to make sure Here's maybe not a ma maybe a message intended for no one but Warner Brothers. It's like we're gonna make sure no one wants to see Matrix Five. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody, maybe we, we weren't sure if anyone was asking for Matrix Four, but we're goddamn gonna make sure no one asks for Matrix Five. So there you go. There's my Jim. There's my hot take on the meaning of this film. What about you? To you, yeah. I mean, I was, I was reading about. I <laughs> well, I'll tell you. Hey, listen. Um, I had I, I I to explain that reference for those of you who don't know. I do a little uh, voiceover. Check my Fiverr Git page link in the description. I do a little voiceover. I had the opportunity to audition for a chess channel, and I, I did the audition. I played it straight. NPR. Kasparov, this is Kasparov's <laughs> classic defense. Um, but there's a part of me that really wanted to do it like I was on ESPN the eight, the Ocho, <laughs> the dodgeball championships. Yeah, what do you think there, Pepper? <laughs> cotton, is it, is it pepper Kasparov cotton? is, is the, yeah. pepper and cotton, <laughs> but great role by Jason Bateman in, yeah, uh, an awesome bit of nonsense dodgeball yes yeah anyway uh, sorry jim yeah, yeah. meaning <laughs> no 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 well you know i was sort of catching up part of part of the issue you know is having seen it three weeks ago and, and maybe this speaks to the quality of it i i i went over the uh wikipedia plot the synopsis i watched the trailer i watched our own uh uh, parking lot reaction i'm still like uh, <laughs> what really had like like it was just so kind of formless in my own brain but um yeah uh, more so than any other movies that i'd seen a month ago say but and i mean remember i jim i had the benefit of watching it again on screen streaming yeah like, you yeah. could see it on the tv in the background as mm. jim and i were doing our tech rollout speaking of which which has worked out super well if we could do every show like this again, I'd be ecstatic. Anyway, continue. Yeah, John. yeah. But I mean, a lot of it had to do with, uh, you know, and the way it ends, the power of love over anything else, any other kind of construct, and 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 the the, you know, almost like a Joe Biden. When people come together, they can accomplish anything. Uh, there's a lot written into, a uh, lot written about it, um, and I and I read some commentary, but I, I it seems to me. At first, I thought, "Am I? Am I? Was I giving this movie a fair shake?" And then I thought, "Well, maybe these writers are just really big Matrix fans, and they're sort of reading into it." Um, and and I'm sort of leaning a little more that way. As I well. I think your lean is right. Like, let's not yeah. give it. Just because I think there might be a couple of interesting things, in no way should yeah. anyone think, "Wow, no, people are just missing the boat on this." Nobody's yeah, missing the yeah. boat on this movie. And ultimately, you know, you feel a way, you know, and if you're halfway honest, you feel a way about a movie coming out and then you try to explain it first to yourself. And then if you've got a YouTube channel to explain it to everyone else. <laughs> um, but uh, meaning... Or I at guess, least think you know, we are. Yeah, well, yeah, or attempt to or, or what have you. But, I, you know, in terms of meaning, uh, sometimes uh, in the in this life, you realize that a lot of, uh, jobs uh, are just there to um, uh, basically uh, sustain themselves. You know what I mean? And, and this felt like a sort of a self-sustaining, like in that it was created to, uh, you know, to be a placeholder, to, to, to avoid Warner Brothers making the movie on their own. I mean, if you want to take the very cynical uh, view on it, I, I didn't, I didn't get a lot out of this meaning wise. I mean, I was just sort of watching for the, uh, you know, to see what happened, to see if they could, you know, turn this into something that, that would interest me. But like I said, I wasn't really particularly interested in the, the first two movies or the, sorry, the, the second two movies. And I, and I sort of looking back, I sort of wonder maybe this would have been a better standalone. Of course it made gobs of money afterwards uh, with uh, matrix uh, two and three, but yeah, I mean, uh, meaning, 
I might just be ascribing something to it if, if you know, I might just be reading it in, into myself. I, I didn't, I didn't really have tons, tons here, uh, and that perhaps is a reflection on, on the movie itself. Uh, yeah, I, I, it's a hard one, and also that that it was, you know, that was three weeks ago, and it really hasn't stuck around. Like, we did the Power of the Dog, was it last week or two weeks ago? And and we were talking that one's that actually stayed with me quite a bit uh, in in the last two weeks. I didn't didn't love 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 it, but you know I've been thinking about it and, and it's been sort of uh, you know working its way in I my brain. I can't believe but, I've yeah. cut myself off, Jim. We have to move on. We've only oh, got yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I thought you were being quiet myself. there. Right? Yeah, <laughs> and I was like, Jesus Christ, man, this has got nothing to say. You got nothing to say on the meeting. Let's move. we got to move on. Oh yeah. wait, my my mic. <laughs> so much for. Uh, Tech problem free. <laughs> well, Christensen on a cell phone. Um, okay. Oh, that's, I, yeah, Jelly Duck says you're muted, Rob. So. Yeah. Um, I do think we do have one critical question before we move on, Jim. Uh, and that is uh, from DMG. It says, does, does the awfulness of the movie directly affect how good or bad Tim Horton's taste after? Yeah. Uh, Jim, what do you think on that? That's a great, that's a, that, now that's the question of the night. Yeah. Jeez, we need uh, like a, if we, we should hit up Tim Hortons for a sponsorship. Just again. The Tim Hortons question of the night. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, you get a complimentary gift card for a box of Tim Beams. I don't think the quality of the movie, it's just the fact that we're, you know, we've, we're, uh, you know, survive. We're getting out of the house. Basically, it almost feels like a reward in these COVID times that we've actually made it out and made it to some sort of takeout joint. Okay. I think that just, you know, so no my, effect. My take. No You're effect. saying no effect. I no. yeah, I I gotta agree with Jim. Uh, you you mentioned uh, ap, uh, after the King's Man or after Matrix Four. Really, when I think of what what uh, affects my ex Tim Horton's experience after the movie is, do they have what I want when I there? Because yes. yeah. we're right now. I think we're battling. We're we're probably shooting three for two on getting what we want. Yes. Um, yeah. So that's only that's sixty percent. Which I mean, yeah. If you're batter, that's great. But it's his restaurant for six. Yeah. <laughs> okay, uh, Jim. What? Well, let's. Uh, I'm. I'm slipping it over to you. Sure. It's now time to talk about uh, the next movie. But before we do that, yes, yeah. one more time, folks. I'm going to ask you for a thumbs up. If you haven't already, please subscribe. And of course, last but certainly not least. Once you've hit subscribe, might as well as uh, ring that bell. That's right, folks. How will you know when we've got another show coming up or another video coming out if you don't, if you aren't, uh, if you're not getting notified? Okay, Jim, what's the next movie we are looking at? What What are we doing? It's a does it hold up next week, isn't it? It is. It's the 30th of the month, the last Sunday of the month. So we will be taking a look at the... Uh, uh, intellectual uh, deep dive that is Uncle Buck. <laughs> That's right, everybody. Another 80s classic from John Hughes, 1989's Uncle Buck. Starring, of course, the late, great John Candy. Uh, John Candy. Uh, yeah, and uh, a, a standout, a couple of standout performances, Gina, uh, Gina Louisa Kelly, uh, Gabby Hoffman, uh, Macaulay oh, yeah. Culkin, you know, yeah, so we'll be doing that next week at a quarter to 10, so 9.45 Central Standard Time next, uh, what is it, next, uh, when are we doing uh, that again, 30th. Jim? The 30th, thank you very Sunday, much. Sunday the 30th, yeah. <laughs> the 30th, uh, and uh, we'd love to see you all there. We will have a guest, perhaps two. We're doing a tech thing next week, and we'll see if, we can't, if I can't make a stream with, like, guests you know, uh, beyond uh, uh, your your charming uh, co-hosts uh, in front of you now, uh, but that will uh, that remains to be seen. All right, uh, Jim, uh, let's uh, final final. Give me some final thoughts, baby. Well, two final thoughts. Uh, one of which is uh, um, 
rewatch the first Matrix if you feel like watching a Matrix movie. Second thought, completely unconnected, but Heavy Metal was on TCM last night featuring the voice telling of John Candy. So I just thought you'd like that because you have a, a, an affinity you have a fondness I'll, for that movie. I love heavy metal. And yes, uh, there's a movie that I think would hold up it, it, yeah. with all its challenges. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, you know what? Thanks for that, Jim. For myself, I am, uh, yeah, I all right, get rid of that nonsense. Um, yeah, you know, I don't have much to add here uh, on top of what I've already said. I, the, pale reflection of the previous movies and yeah if you're faced on a sa saturday night which one to watch when this inevitably hits streaming uh like uh free streaming everywhere uh you know what uh and there's the original one or even one of the two the two sequels number two reloaded or revolutions watch those far more interesting films far more ambitious um yeah, only the real Lana Wachowski, the only the real Wachowski fans who are trying to pull out their view of filmmaking will find this movie interesting. Um, with that, it why don't we say why don't we say our adieus, our adieus to oh, so yeah, what do we do, Jim? Are we giving her a pass or a fail? Oh yes, uh, I'd I'd fail it. Yeah, it, yeah. it was. Not I, special. I have some sympathy for uh, Ms. Wachowski because it does sound like there's just we'll we'll do it anyway. Take mm -hmm. our check and do our bidding. Uh, so some sympathy, but yeah, no. It at the same time, it's like, yeah, I I can't. <laughs> you know, I feel bad for you, but you didn't pass. Yeah. Uh, yeah. All right. Let's say. You know what? Let's bid adieu to the wonderful people in the best chat on the internet. Um, we've got, uh, of course, oh, and people talking about uh, pancakes. And uh, yeah, Timbits would be great. Ahmed knows Timbits. Everybody knows Timbits. Uh, okay. Yeah. Want to say the, um, want to say, uh, yes, DMG, thank you very much for coming out. Uh, Vlad 65 or fit Walt's flick picks uh, a couple of his recent pictures. I have many disagreements with <laughs> you got to go watch them though and read the chat, read the, the comments. And uh, yes, he also has uh, he's, he's got a disagreement with us, Jim on uh, the power of the dog and our, or at least my interpretation of the Phil character, but you won't know about that unless first of all, you go and watch our take on the power of the dog folks and then get in, get into the comments and see, uh, we, we had some great comments on that last one about, uh, about the power of the dog and, uh, Vlad just chimed in with a good fat comment and I'm looking forward to answering that tomorrow. Um, but yeah, definitely go check out his channel, Walt's Flicks Picks. Uh, I I heartily, wholeheartedly recommend his most recent one, talking about that OG series, The World at War, and uh, The Four Feathers, something he did a little ways ago. Uh, something where I disagree with him on, but it's a great, like it, they just, they're great videos. He gives great context, so definitely go check him out. Uh, of course, we all know DMG our good friend, uh, man, king of the one minute reaction. Go check out his channel. Uh, Ahmed, uh, great seeing you. DMG, Vlad, uh, who, who am I missing here? Oh, Lubomir Alexe Alexeyeva. <laughs> uh, missing um, Richard and Katie. Richard and Katie, Richard, Richard L, Katie Fowler. Thank you guys very much. Uh, I think that covers it for uh, Anastasia. Anastasia, you're absolutely right. Baxter Del Toro or whatever his name Escobar is. Escobar Barker. <laughs> Let us not forget Escobar Barker. Close. <laughs> All right, uh, folks. Again, next week we are uh, asking the question, um, does Uncle Buck hold up? Uh, go check it out. It is on Netflix. Go check it out. And yeah. come back next week. Otherwise, I, I guess, yeah, are we, we're saying, we're saying goodnight, eh? 
saying good night. We're saying goodbye. Good night, folks. And uh, we're